Here's how we use Relevance AI to actually replace Stack AI and build our AI employees. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since I've made one of these videos, but I really wanted to get this one out because we recently came across a super interesting tool called Relevance AI. The purpose of this video is I'm going to show you how we replace Stack AI, which is if you've been in the agency game or if you're making any sort of AI employee, AI chatbot, that sort of thing. Stack AI is kind of the engine in the background. It's what connects you to GPT. The problem with Stack AI, it's, it's pricing strategy is very, very steep, especially if you're in the startup phase and you're still sort of figuring things out. If I jump on to Stack AI's price point right now, you go from zero, which is one project is basically useless to 200 bucks a month for three projects. Now, if you want to create test projects, if you want to duplicate ones and work on new versions, anything that is more than three projects, you're going to be spending $900 a month, which is crazy talk for something that shouldn't be even nearly that expensive. This is where Relevance AI comes in. There's multiple benefits to Relevance AI, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to focus especially on the pricing and the customization of it. It's a lot more beginner friendly, especially if you're just getting started. You want to focus most of your energy and most of your, sorry, most of your resources, not on tools, but on growing the company, growing the business, growing the brand. The tools that you're using shouldn't be the main focus. It's cheaper. It's more customizable. It's more intuitive, even from the way that it's presented. It's also the target audience are people who are trying to make these AI employees, agents, assistants, whatever you call them. The fact that that is what they're building their, or that's what it seems at least that they're building their platform around. It really helps with the utility of it because they keep in mind, we are, or at least me making this video, we are their target audience. And just a heads up, all the templates I'm going to refer to are going to be available in the description. You can just click on the link and you'll be able to download them. There are two caveats as far as the disadvantages of relevance AI. And I'll send them here. The first one, it is a bit slower and substantially so than Stack AI. I think on average on Stack AI, you could see like the words being written like in ChatGBT, but on average it would take maybe, depending on the model you use, let's call it, let's call it 25 seconds. I would place relevance AI at around the 45 to 50 second reach. Something to keep in mind, especially if you require fast answers. Now on our end, it doesn't affect us. It's actually better because the longer somebody takes to respond, the more human it feels, right? If you text somebody, they don't answer within three seconds. It takes them time to read it, time to process what you just asked, try to come up with an answer and then respond to you. Even the best customer service agents don't respond within three seconds. It also feels very inhuman to do so. So for us, it works out fine. But if in your use case, it's not something that you'd want or something that you need immediate speed, something to keep in mind. The second biggest, and this is the issue that we had to find an issue for us. Sorry, this is the issue that we had to find a solution for is the conversational history of these AI systems, because that is not a feature that is built in well, at least for our purposes or that we found. And I'll show you exactly how we worked around that. So I'll stop talking and let's just jump right in. Now, all right, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is actually sign up for Relevance AI. It should be pretty simple. If you just Google Relevance AI, it'll come up. If there's an affiliate link, I'll have it in the description below. Now, once you're actually in Relevance AI, there's a bunch of stuff. What I actually suggest you do is just go through the templates. There's a bunch of interesting stuff right here, especially if you're just looking around, trying to figure out what you can do. The templates has a gold mine of ideas from company research to spin selling to, or how to spend sell, sorry, to how to improve your copy to Google search. The fact that it has access to the internet gives it a huge, huge, huge advantage. And you can even, I would play around a little bit with uh, researcher Rachel, which you can just give it any topic. And since it uses the internet, it'll give you up to the information on whatever inf or topic you want. Actually, I'll click on it just to show you what it looks like. Give us a clear instruction. And this is what we call agents, which is in simple terms, instead of just prompting something, meaning that give me this, it'll, you give it sort of a task to do, and then it'll find the correct prompts in order to complete said task, if that makes sense. And then if you go into advanced options, it'll tell you what it does. So these are the different tools that you use. GPT on my files, Google search, it scripts website, summarize meeting transcripts, analyzes CSV file, and then as well as YouTube video comment analysis. And you can give it or remove tools at your own leisure. But the first thing I would do is just have a look into the agents, see what those are about. Just have a look around, right? Now, when you want to actually build this thing, click on tools and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and create a tool. I'll put the export link for this tool in the description. Import that 
and it should look something like this. You can go ahead and ask it a question here, but for this purpose, I'll show you what the background of it looks like. Now, there's sort of two parts to this bot, or to this engine, let's call it. You have, actually, I think you consider it three. You have the voice flow aspect of it, which is if you're building AI systems, you might be using voice flow, you might be using bot press. Regardless, the first thing you wanna do is we're using this in the API version as well, which is super cool, the fact that they have that available. Whenever you get a question in voice flow slash bot press, this is sent into here but the first thing you want to do is give this engine of yours knowledge now this can be a csv file you can connect to the internet to like a url whatever it is the same way uh, we can upload documents pdfs next thing you want to do is give it any user input now this one you just want to make sure that the variable is the same on voice flow as it is on relevance ai for this one we just use it api question the next thing you want to do is connect it to Airtable. here's why the conversational part of Relevance AI is only works within Relevance AI, which means that if you're not using this as an engine, then you can use the conversational history of LLMs within voice law, right? Because if you click on here, there's something that says conversational history. That's what I'm talking about. You can just use this. However, since we're using this as an engine that is connected to voice flow, we kind of have to find a workaround. And that workaround is Airtable. Because now the problem that you're going to have with Relevance is whenever you ask a new question, it's gonna completely forget everything else because it doesn't have context of what the conversation is happening. So how do we fix that? Well, we have to give it context. We have to give it the rest of the conversation. How do we do that? Then we're just gonna save every single conversation that's being had to, void, to Airtable, sorry. Here's what that looks like. We're now in Airtable. Now, what I wanna make clear is this is not a perfect solution, given the fact that this will create a sort of bottleneck between, especially if you have a lot of conversations going on at the same time. Currently, there is no way to distinguish between the different conversations. So if two people are talking to the same bot at the same time, it will all look like one big list in this air table. Something to keep in mind. One solution that we found for this would be to create a, a basically an ID right, right before the voice flow sort of loop and just put an ID and transfer that and then tell uh, GPT to only take into consideration IDs that match the ID that you're currently looking at. But it's something that I, I think it's important to mention to not be confused as to why maybe it's giving you weird answers. But if you have a low enough volumes, it shouldn't be that big of a problem. GPT is pretty smart. We're able to detect, well, this is something that's completely unrelated. So let me just restart. Regardless, we have a column, we have a couple different columns in Airtable. One of them is called date submitted, one of the API question, the other one's API response. Three straightforward. Whenever a new question goes through, it goes to API question. The LLM or GBT in this case does a bit of reasoning, gives an answer, and it comes back with an API response. Then whenever a new question comes back, it then gives you another API response. And every single time that happens, a new record is created. That's pretty much all we need Airtable for in this specific case. Fantastic. Now that we have all the building blocks for this engine, let's go chronologically as to how this whole system works. So the first thing that happens is that an API call is made to Relevance AI. And then what happens is that we're then sending an API request. And by the way, disregard the tokens. They're all going to be deleted after this recording. We're going to be gathering or requesting information from Airtable. And the reason why this is so long is we set it to only re return, sorry, the first eight conversations. Now you can mess around with this. We had, we tried for five, we tried for eight, we tried for four, but this really depends on how long conversations supposedly are or, or mostly are for your specific use case. For us, we, I think we tried four and eight. I think four we had a bit more success because people don't usually ask four different questions. But keep in mind, if you're returning eight records, that's four API questions and four API responses. So it's four, back and forth. It's not eight back and forth. Once we return those, we now have the records. We have the conversational record, which gives us history for our engine. Then once we have the, uh, we've got the records, we're then sending a different API request, but this one is a post one to Airtable. Once again, this one, this time posting the question that we just received from VoiceFlow and putting it into the conversational record. So we're filling this. That suggests to update the, the um, database of records for a conversational history. Now, this, thing, this is where things get a bit more interesting. We're then sending both the conversational history and the question and the context 
to OpenAI or GPT in this case. Now, the way we've gone here, it's pretty straightforward, bit of context, then the knowledge. Relevance is pretty straightforward with how they give the knowledge to GPT. You have a couple different options on how you can, if there's too much context or the knowledge is too big, you can either, I believe, let me pull it up. You can either deal with it with by getting the most relevant, by summarizing, or by just trying to stuff as much as you can in. Yeah, summarize, most relevant data, or full content. We just do it for summarize, but you can try and see which works best for you. Now, once we have the plumbing example, and this, by the way, as an example, I've used a plumbing company that I just found online. I give it a bit of a prompt saying, you are Ellen assistant for Albuquerque Plumbing, the most trusted plumbing services in New Mexico, yada, yada, yada. Take it, and this, if you mess around with these engines, is the exact same thing you would put in Stack AI. Just put it here. And set the temperature as you'd like, temperature zero two. Once you have the response from the LLM, we're then going to set the response to Airtable to then fill out the other part of it. So the API response in this case. It's a super simple response to Airtable. Like I said, disregard the tokens are going to be deleted. This is just a string to get us to send it very easily. And then after that, that is pretty much it. You now have a engine that replaces Stack AI for four and a half times less the cost. All right. Now, after you basically set up the whole system, it should look something like this. If I ask a question that most people would, such as, what services do you provide? Apparently, I can't type. We specialize in link detection, pipe repairs, water heater installations. That A thing, sometimes because we'll have to fix that, this little A thing. But on the rest of it, it's pretty good as far as um, the actual answer itself. Now, if I say, sure, given it's what we requested of it, it should return something along the lines of book an appointment. Fantastic. Okay, so now that we know this works, if I go back into our database, it should now look something like this, right? Um, what do you do for leaks, which was what we had previously? We had a couple of test runs as well. And then what services you provide that, that, that. So you also get a, at the same time, you get a transcript record. While I might not have the entire conversation for voice flow, every single thing that goes through your engine, which is in this case, relevance, will be here. Fantastic. Now, going back to the homepage of relevance, like I mentioned earlier, we are, especially a lot of the newer projects we're working on, given the just plethora of templates that they have available, even us, it allows us to think about new ideas that come up with new ways to help our clients. And if you're interested at all in getting started in the AI world, especially if you have sort of surpassed a level of just using ChatGPT, Relevance AI is really something to look out for. They're a newer company. I think they're maybe two or three years old, but the amount of work that they've put in to make sure that we have the tools we need in order to do our jobs effectively and correctly has just been really refreshing. And we're rooting for them. Go check them out. It's like the fact that it's only 20 bucks a month to try makes it ridiculous to not even give it a shot. On that note, thank you very much for watching. Like I mentioned, all of the templates, documents, whatever, are going to be available in the description. Feel free to go ahead and play with them. If you have any suggestions for improvements, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. And we'll be making a bunch more about relevance because I think it's a super interesting platform. Thank you.